a 204 hour transmission and uh, we got multiple stages we're going through and replacing the transmission we're rebuilding the parts on the inside of the transmission I should say and um, you know we kind of broke down some of the parts we found on the inside already and walked through the uh, billet pump rebuild with the high pressure uh, valving and the, and the um, uh, TCC uh, valve all, all that's rebuilt so the pumps done it's kind of like stage one and just to give you an overview, we're going to be moving on to the next stage here. Here, i got a breakdown. You can see this, uh, this chart right here. It shows all the different parts and pieces of the transmission from one end to the other. That looks really complicated. But really, you break it down into smaller sections, and that's what we're doing. So we've dealt with the pump system. And so that's basically this section right up here. We've dealt with the pump system. And now you could deal then with your input system and your uh, fourth gear uh, clutch and planetary assembly then you got your center support your main drum forward drum and direct drum assembly and then you've got your planetaries and then basically your uh, output shaft and uh, low reverse assembly so we're actually going to start with the low reverse uh, assembly all right so let's take a look at some of the parts we got going on here um, just want to point out you're you're seeing double there because I've got the old parts over here on the left and we got the new parts over here on the right and um, walking our way through this. Now I don't have all the parts just yet for the output shaft assembly, so I've got the old output shaft here. And um, you know, this output shaft, the drive, basically this is the piece that the drive shaft keys into. This is the part that's sticking out of the back of the transmission. Your speedometer gear hooks up into this as it comes through the side of the transmission. And this is your rear internal gear that's pressed onto the shaft, as you can see right here. Okay, and then you got some valving going on. You got some passageways for. Um, uh, oil to get through and then you've got it, it keying into the next section up here back into the sun shell and, and going into the, the, the forward and the main drum assemblies. So that's kind of the output shaft. Now this is good to about 650 horsepower. This stock output shaft will start to twist and bend. So I'm waiting on a new uh, output shaft to come in because we want to go full tilt on this thing. Um, so we're waiting on that. But uh, I do have the, uh, the new rear internal gear. So uh, I'll point that out here in a second. So this is the old setup, rear internal gear and the output shaft. Then we've got our um, secondary uh, planetary assembly. That's this right here. This is our planetary gear and it's got the low roller clutch on the inside as well as the low roller race on the inside of that. And there's a thrust washer or actually a thrust bearing down inside here. And all these look like they're in good shape. They don't, they don't really have any problems with them. Um, but we're going to make it better. So that's that. The rear piston assembly hooks up to the back of this. And so this is actually a piston system, which is down onto here. And it keys down into there. And when it's in the transmission, keys into the, the transmission like this, just before the tail shaft. And when hydraulic pressure comes up into here, it pushes this piston out, which compresses... Uh, the clutch pack in the back to give you forward or reverse and this is your low gear or reverse gear and this is retained back with this spring assembly all right and it pushes back on these retainers here uh, the spring compressor here basically and all this stuff pushes back on that clutch pack in the back of the transmission that's how that works well these things are upgradable so some of these parts are going to be reused these items over here are going to be reused on our new parts but these are the old parts that are going to get replaced now again, none of these things look like they're in failure mode, but they're just not going to be able to handle what we want to do with the thing down the road. Remember, when the transmission goes in the car, if I decide I want to put a supercharger on it or do something like that, I don't want to have to pull the transmission to make it live. I want this thing to be ready to go. So, a couple of things we have going over, going on over here. All right. So on our new setup, here's our new uh, low reverse clutch housing, um, and here's the old one. And one of the biggest things that I'll point out is one, the old one, you can just see it, it's just slightly worn all around it. This, the uh, steels actually key into this. Um, it keys in, actually keys into, I'm sorry, this keys into the housing. And, and this one is much more crisp. It's been finished off a lot better. This is from CK Performance over here. And it's got a roller uh, bearing assembly right here, whereas this system works on a thrust washer. As you can see the scoring in the housing right there. That's friction, that's power loss. I want all the power I can get to the ground. So this is our new low reverse clutch housing. This is our new low reverse clutch piston. Looks very similar to the other one, except this one's made of steel. This one's billet aluminum. And this 
is not going to twist or deflect, creating imperfect um, low gear application on the clutch pack. So at high pressures, which our pump, if you recall, is going to be running 260 to 290 PSI just about all the time with that full manual valve body, this thing has a potential to twist and flex under that kind of pressure. This one's not going to do that. So that's the benefit of this. we got new lip seals for it. We've got new wave springs, and we've got two here. Two wave springs are actually used and recommended when you're rebuilding one of these when you run a high line pressure or trans brake or anything like that as opposed to the one. This is going to soften the reverse gear application. So when I shift from park, the pressure uh, from the valve body is going to be you know, dumping right into the transmission. You click it through a reverse, it, it tends to really slam reverse unless you've got a double spring in there to help overcome some of that pressure. So we're going to be putting in two springs, two brand new uh, wave springs to help with that reverse and soften that out and make sure it's not too harsh. Some other things that we have going on here, some trick stuff. Here's our new rear internal gear. This takes the place of this one over here, as you can see. It'll slide onto our new output shaft once we get it. But some of the things I'd like to point out that are different between the old one and the new one, and I'm not going to be able to hold everything here. The old one, you can see there's a thrust washer that's sitting on the outside of the thrust bearing on the inside of that uh, rear internal gear. Um, that goes against the face of the planetary. So that thrust washer sits up here in the face of the planetary. Let's see if I can show you. I can get it off of there. So this is the old washer, but the new planetary, and that, that kind of sits on there like that. And that's fine, but there's a lot of, again, drag associated with that. So we've got horse uh, parasitic power loss because of the friction of the thrust washer. So the new rear internal gear I have has actually been machined for a thrust bearing. Got this from CK Performance, got the thrust bearing in there, and you can see it's all been CNC machined and finished off really precision. Um, I'll just have the uh, the other shaft washer just sitting in there to see how that all would look. So that's going to be real nice too. So the rear internal gear has been rollerized and the low reverse clutch housing has been rollerized. So we're really going to be saving that horsepower and putting it to the drive shaft. The last thing that's an upgrade is the, um, the modified OEM Turbo Buick um, secondary planetary here and we're going to get another one for the primary planetary but um, the big difference here, which is kind of hard to see, I'll do my best to try to reveal it to you. You can see a little brass band going in between those little pinion gears there. Well, if you look at the old one that came out, you won't see any of that. All they have are these little brass washers that are on either end of those pinion gears. And if you look at the play, try to compare the two side by side you can look at the play in the old and I haven't mic'd it out but I mean the old one goes up and down a fair amount it probably is out of spec the new one barely moves up and down well these straps here as uh, Chris at CK calls them these straps that go in between the pinions actually help bear some of that thrust load and they don't fatigue these planetaries in high thrust load environments you know he's seeing transmission seeing 800 900 horsepower routinely applied and these things are living through it no problems no questions asked it's really nice it comes straight from ck with all of the bushings already installed ready to go you just need to put your 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 low reverse clutch all that stuff in there and and you're good to go so i'm going to take these parts and put them together and we'll show it we'll 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 do a little test on it once it's all put together make sure the piston and everything works so you can see what everything looks like once that's done all right so uh things are coming along a little bit we've got uh our roller bearings our, our thrust uh bearings if you will all soaking in uh, trans fluid just making sure that they're getting full of oil and that they're going to be fine because remember this system is probably going to sit for a little while with those bearings all assembled and everything so we want to make sure that they're got a good amount of oil in there we've got our lip seals already mounted on our new low uh, reverse clutch piston um, so that's ready to go compared to the old one here's the new one and here's our new uh, low roller clutch housing you can see it's been machined down for that uh, thrust uh, bearing that's in there um, one of the other things that I didn't mention uh, that actually Chris talks about in the book is high pressure 
uh, situations, high pressure transmissions or trans brake transmissions, it's recommended that you actually drill a 60 thousandths uh, relief hole in the corner <coughs> um, just upside from the uh, indexing hole in the bottom uh, of the uh, low roller uh, clutch housing. And I think that that is to give some relief area for high pressure so it doesn't overexert on the piston or anything like that. So we did that. You can't do that once you get it all put together. So make sure we get all that taken care of. Here you can see the low roller race already been removed and the low roller clutch assembly. They're going to go inside here once we get the bearing put in. And we'll get all that matched up and get the rest of this uh, piston system put together. All right, we've got our new um, low reverse clutch piston housing. Uh, all assembled, lip seals, double spring in there, and the retainer all put together. So I'll show you how that works uh, in a second because we actually can test that with air pressure to make sure the piston's working right. And then our um, our rear planetary is all set up in the rear internal gear for the new setup. So I just wanted to show you something. It might be kind of hard for me to showcase, but if you look at the old setup, you can see the old setup. It barely rotates as it goes around and that's part of that friction that we're trying to work against the new setup when you just go ahead and roll it you can see it just bends and that's those roller um, of those thrust bearings versus those thrust washers so that's going to be saving horsepower right there and getting more to the ground here we'll, we'll show you how we do a test on the, the piston itself what we'll do is we'll take an air uh, chuck and about 25 psi of air and put it in the middle and hopefully you can see this You'll see the, the piston pop up. You can see it popping up. Um, and that's going to be when the system gets uh, fluid pressure from the hydraulic pump on the front of the transmission for that gear as commanded by the valve body. It's going to go ahead and compress, and that's going to push the clutch pack together and give you a new gear. So that should be working between reverse and, and low uh, one gears right there. So that system's all set up, ready to go. We're gonna package all this stuff up in an airtight bag so it's all set up. And um, at that point, uh, we'll be moving on to the next, the next setup. And it actually gives you that roller, low roller clutch. We'll let it rotate one way, but it won't let it rotate the other way. You can see them kind of rotate right here. It won't go the other way. It only goes one way. That's part of that low roller clutch and how that system all set up. So there it is, the new setup rolling around. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.